Welcome to Outback Outdoors. Make sure you like, subscribe, and click the alert to stay up to date on all our new videos. Who's an elk hunter in here? Hey, I know that guy's an elk hunter. You should see some of the elk on his wall. So you're in the right place then. Um, one of the most frustrating things about elk hunting, especially with a bow because of the proximity that you need to get to, is getting everything what you think right and then you feel that wind on the back of your neck and, and it's sayonara. Frustrating, but if it, if it was easy, everybody'd do it, right? I wanna talk a little bit. This is gonna be like drinking from a fire hose, but bear with me, I am gonna, if you have a question, just raise your hand, I'll stop and let's address it. Because we're gonna talk about wind and the difference in wind and how we can use the wind to our advantage, not just to get into proximity, but how we can forecast things so we don't put ourselves in a bad situation, okay? Let me tell you, I've made all the mistakes I've screwed it up so many times and more than once per issue. So I, I've got a lot of experience of, of, of messing it up. But I wanted to show you a couple things. Let's get into the, into the spirit of elk hunting. So in 2014, I think, I was fortunate to draw Unit 61. Um, it took, I think it took me 13 preference points to draw it. Wonderful unit, had a great time. I did not kill my bull, but I learned so much, it was so valuable. In this situation, we were getting up, it was one of those mornings that was just special. The bulls were bugling at each other. I didn't have to call a lot, and I had the, the winds, as we'll talk about, the thermals had just changed, so I needed to stay up out of the bottom because this bull was coming in and I could see where I thought he was gonna come on a trail. And I set myself up, had a cameraman above me and the bull did exactly like he read the script. Now I kind of thought that he would keep coming on that trail. But look at what he does. He kind of comes down below me. I'm a firm believer in ranging before I shoot, if you can. And I had all the time in the world because I'm up, he doesn't know I'm in the country. I'm not calling the bull above me. That's the bull above me calling. Perfect scenario. And he's gonna go get him some water. How much more relaxed could you have a bull be? only to miss him. So that's my fault. I did not rearrange him. I had ranged the spot that I, I assumed he was gonna go, but I did not range where he was, and I had the time. So, that's shame on me. Now, this is a little different scenario. Again, the wind was right on that other one. I'm in a situation where I get up into a bench and there's elk all around me. And, I, and, I, and I've got cows coming and so I know there's a bull coming. So I get myself set up where I'm in the position and I think everything's just right. But as we'll talk about with benches, things happen. Uh-oh, so he was seven yards. I didn't need to rearrange him. I just, the wind just was sitting there doing this. If I had it all to do over again, I would have moved back and given myself more like a 20 yard berth, right? If hindsight's 20-20, right? We all know what we shoulda, woulda, coulda done, right? So what we're gonna talk about is how wind and thermals interact. That's the key. A good friend of mine who's probably forgot more about hunting than I know is Adam Wells. And he, he told me this, you, if you're gonna take notes, this is what you should take notes on. 
You can fool their eyes, you can fool their ears, but you will never fool their nose. You won't do it. I don't care if you have the latest, greatest boots. I don't care if you have the latest, greatest scent technology. The first hill you climb over in Colorado, at least, in my experience, I smell like a goat because I'm sweating, and right? And you're taking all your layers off to try and keep that from happening, but it just happens, we're humans. So in backcountry hunting, that's the toughest thing is trying to keep your smell down. Well, that's why we're gonna use the wind. It's foolproof. If we can understand it, it's foolproof. Thanks for watching Outback Outdoors. We encourage you to comment below, and as always, like, subscribe, and click the alert to stay up to date on all our new videos.